Hello and welcome to the big picture. The India Pakistan cricket matches have always evoked strong emotions. The rivalry on field is multiplied several times off the field as people on both sides take, take strong nationalistic positions. However, over the years, the emotions have dissipated a little. But some Kashmiri students in Meerut watching the Asia Cup match last week between India and Pakistan, however, got carried away and now find themselves in trouble. The fact that some of them cheered for the Pakistani team led to them landing in serious trouble with the university authorities forced to file a complaint against them. The Uttar Pradesh police with great alacrity filed charges of sedition and also of promoting enmity between, between different communities even as the university authorities suspended 67 of them and expelled them from the hostels. Only after strong objections and protests from various quarters, including the Jammu and Kashmir chief minister, the charges of sedition have been withdrawn. However, the students continue to face charges and many of them have gone back to Kashmir. Pakistani authorities have taken advantage of the situation and are trying to fish in troubled waters. The question is whether taking positions in a cricket match or in any sports be construed to be an act of sedition or even promoting enmity between communities? Or were the actions of the Kashmiri students so provocative as to invite such reactions? What's the role of the university authorities and what would be the impact on students from Kashmir wanting to study in different parts of India? We will look at all this today with Justice B.A. Khan, former Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir High Court, Maxwell Pereira, former Joint Commissioner of Delhi Police, Pradeep Magazine, Senior Sports Journalist, and on phone line from Srinagar is Shujat Bukhari, editor of Rising Kashmir. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Justice Khan, I would like to come to you first. Yeah. Some people have called it an insult to the nation that these boys were indulging in. Uh, for me, it has been a very absurd, a ridiculous and a very petty action. I don't see any illegality involved if uh, whatever is being projected that uh, these boys uh, cheered or uh, raised some slogan in favor of some team or the other. And um, it's beyond comprehension, it is beyond uh, a stretch of imagination that you, uh, the authorities have uh, reportedly slapped a charge of sedition. Uh, with utter disregard to what a sedition means and what uh, section 124A uh, conveys or what its import is. Uh, anybody who has a look on that section would know that it says that any person who brings in hatred or contempt or excites some kind of a dissatisfaction against a government established by law and Girish, this has been uh, held constitutionally valid. You must have uh, heard about it, known about it in Kidarnath's case yes. by the Supreme Court. But with certain after the High Court and held it ultra wise. Yes, uh, yeah, because if you if you uh, at the same time reflect on the freedom of expression guaranteed by Article 19, Article 19. Uh, one comes nearer to that conclusion at times also. But the Supreme Court put certain safeguards. For example. Uh, that there must be an intention to disturb public peace to bring an action within this. Uh, see, for me, what is of concern is that our authorities are so much ignorant about the provisions of law, about the import of provisions of law. The result is that they misapply provisions of law to different fact situations. And we have a problem in hand. If I stretch it to the area spanning in the courts, one reason could be this. Why? Because your investigations, your affairs are registered by police agency. Mr. Maxwell Pereira will bear me out. He is in Delhi, but he must know what's happening in Meerut and what's happening in the villages of India. Now, those uh, in those places, police station munshis do not know under what provision to register. And somebody would come there and say that put this 307 or put 302, or put whatever, or in this case put sedition 124. And that is why ultimately you have so, see this waste of time, 
matter goes into the courts and ultimately it is found is it a sedition mr uh, justice khan i do i mean uh, would you do you really think that this is just a act of ignorance on the part of the police authorities in 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 uh, using this these sections of the ipc or in, no, there is a confusion. For example, if you, you what are you trying to convey? If you are convey, trying to convey, for example, the local authority tries to convey that we are acting tough against what? If that is the intention of conveying, but in this case there is a confusion. Who asked for registration? If university has registered the affair, university has filed a complaint. The university, being people of educated people, must know what kind of a offence one to form a makes. Then I don't know. I mean, we are not. It's not very clear, or we are not sure whether the whether the university authorities suggested. Uh, filing of uh, FIR under this oh, or a Thana Munshi put Thana 124 Munshi. A there. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me get yeah. Maxwell Pereira, we will we'll get better uh, clarity on uh. this. Maxwell Pereira, you think that you know the the, uh, the, the the sections which have been used against these students for what they are supposed to have done, is it is is it justifiable? And, and one more thing is, do you think that these kind of um, you know actions of Today it is students. Tomorrow it can be anybody else who you know is watching a cricket match and shouting and screaming. You d d would, would should the police take such actions? Uh, Girish, I think uh, there are one or two aspects of this we need to uh, understand. Yes, this is an incident that has been unnecessarily and very very you know uncaringly. Uh, callously um, sort of uh, uh, treated and uh, as Justice Khan has mentioned I have no hesitation in saying that uh, the application of sections has been without any application of mind and uh, this is precisely what happens uh, when uh, you know the law is not known its, its import is not known now, having said that, we should understand the incident. Yes. There is an incident which, in which boys, young boys are watching a cricket match or a football match or any other sport right. where passions are, you know, high and your enthusiasm, you know, carries over. Uh, you know, jubilation or taking sides is uh, something normal in sport right. and nothing much should really come out of it. It is unfortunate that the act of maybe, I don't think there would be more than one or two people who may have done it, but then what happens immediately? Even if it doesn't have done The kind of it. racial profiling that takes place as a fallout, yes. The others may not have been, but it impacted the 65 or 67 people who were immediately, you know, profiled as a group. And, you know, the impact or the, or the repercussions hit them totally as a class of people, right. as a people of a region, as, a, as Kashmiris. I mean, that is the unfortunate fallout of a simple, small incident of uh, watching or excitement over sport. You, so you, you think this that this is... is you, so once we know that... Uh, Maxwell, so you think that this is, this is a case of racial profiling because one of the students have been quoted today in one of the newspapers asking, have, we, have these charges been framed against us because we were supporting Pakistan or is it because we were Kashmiris? No, it is a Kash being Kashmiris is sort of a fallout of an incident, you know, because two or three boys, you know, may have reveled. I don't know the facts. I think the local police may, will be in a better position to, men, uh, you know, talk about it. Uh, but going by what we have read in the papers, it is a simple act of watching a sport. The sport has, um, you know, sort of... Uh, uh, being uh, colored in a in a manner in which somebody um, a group of boys among the lot that were watching were suddenly found uh, uh, 
you know, cheering for Pakistan. Right. And uh, so what? I mean, I don't so see anything wrong in, uh, you know, cheering Pakistan. If you remember, I think one of the most gracious acts, I don't remember the actual, uh, uh, actual uh, uh, sort of uh, test, uh, uh, I can't name the year, but there was that year when Pakistan beat India and uh, uh, in Chennai, if I recall, and the team, cricket team, you know, they they sort of had a victory Absolutely. round of the whole yes. uh, stadium. Right. And and the people of India, people of Chennai cheered them. Absolutely. You know, cheered them to, you know, skies. Absolutely. And, and that was such a wonderful event, such a wonderful, you know, scene to watch. Right. The Indians cheering the, you know, winners, the Pakistanis, uh, who happen to be Pakistanis. And that is, that is the kind of a sportsman spirit that should be there. And that is something wonderful. And so what that this happened in Meerut and why is the country worked up? In fact, the country should have joined together if they won in cheering them. Absolutely. Because they have won. Absolutely. They were the winners. Okay. And this is ridiculous. Whether okay. it is police, whether it is police in Meerut or police anywhere else in the country, the manner in which which was acted is totally wrong, totally stupid and totally uncalled for. Yes. Uh, Pradeep, coming to you. You know, both of them have, have taken very strong positions and rightly so. But the fact of the matter is politics takes over when India and Pakistan plays. You have, you have been a witness to this for a long time, the India-Pakistan cricket matches, hockey matches, whatever it is. You think that, you know, to a great extent, the media creates this kind of a hype? <coughs> Look, I am in uh, agreement with uh, both what they have said. And I also feel uh, like sports should not get mixed up. You, I have every right to chair any team I feel Absolutely. like. Where does sedition come in here? So I won't elaborate on what yeah. they have said because I agree with them. Yes. You know, the, here the problem could be. A, it's, it's, these are Kashmiris. We know there is a problem in Kashmir. Uh, no matter how much we try to tell the world, they look, no Kashmiris are with India. The fact is that they are protesting there. The fact is that there is a large section of society which feels alienated Alien. with India. So now when it gets mixed up with their cheering, you know, in India, there is a, this right-wing element that even if non-Kashmiris cheer for Pakistan, they would go into the streets and they will protest. So when it gets mixed up, when the state gets, see the sad part is the state should not get mixed up in this. When the establishment, when the police gets mixed up in this, when the university authorities exactly. get mixed up in, in this, and they level charges of sedition, actually they are the ones now who are inflaming the situation. Right. You know, fine, uh, these Kashmiri boys uh, supported Pakistan. There are a lot of people in India, I see, I, I watch matches there many times, I support not the Indian team, I support the rival team. I have supported, I have cheered the Indian team. All of us have cheered the Pakistan. And I, I, I will another, another point here. Indians travel abroad. Right. We have a lot of diaspora right. who support us. See, you go to England, you see there is 60, 70 percent of the Indians who are British citizens. Absolutely. They come with Indian flags to the ground. Right. They rarely give it so terrible verbal this thing to the uh, to the <laughs> Britishers there. Right. Now, if tomorrow the see the Britishers have every right to say that look, you are our citizens. And you are committing and sedition you again. Are, you are committing sedition. Where, where will this, uh, to what extent can we go into this? So I feel it's, it's, it's ridiculous and absurd uh, of what has happened, but also I think it's a simple the role of the, media. of the times we live in. The role of the media. The role of the media. I, because I, you know, there is always a hype, India-Pakistan match, and you will find this hype you on, know, on television, print, everywhere. You, know, and, you, beyond know, you point, see the kind of uh, commentary, commentary which comes along with that, and you know the the. Uh, you know, the, beyond a point, I feel it is wrong to invest to make sportsmen as ambassadors of either peace or of war. <laughs> you know, you know, there is a limit to which you can go. Once you start doing, once the politicians start using sport as a tool in their hands, 
for either way if you want peace with pakistan you you say ki look how great it is we are sending our team there right. they are coming here when you say no our relationships are bad you, stop the you say you stop it so either way you are using sportsmen as tools which is also wrong so there is somewhere there is a line to be drawn where sports should be left as okay. sports i i i think you you made a very good point there let us get shujat bukari the man is on the ground there shujat is this is this uh, has this whole issue uh, been taken very seriously in kashmir or is it you know we sitting in delhi are we trying to make a big deal out of it or is this something which is really bothering the kashmir is there uh see i think uh, uh, i mean generally people are very much familiar with these things and they have seen these things day in and day out but uh, obviously uh, yes uh, yesterday when this thing happened there was hue and cry in kashmir and i think in certain parts of india as well as uh, the sedition charges were slapped on these boys and everybody was uh, i mean you know everybody was anonymously saying that this they had gone too far in doing so so uh, i i also heard uh, the panelists there and i think i agree with all of them what they said that there is a rationale in what they are saying that the sport has to be seen in the sport separate it has not to be seen in a political separate for that matter then as far as this particular incident is con- concerned i think when you look at this incident it has to be seen in the larger perspective of what is happening in jammu and kashmir yes. it has to be seen in the larger perspective of deep sense of political alienation that has been existing on ground in jammu and kashmir and the way these youths they are grown up in, a, in an atmosphere after 1989 they have only seen soldiers on the roads they have not seen better face of india so obviously there is a sense of hatred also so i think it has to be seen in that direction and obviously when you kill 120 people in 2010 and don't deliver justice to their families and do and then you expect that they will cheer for the indian team and as far as cricket is concerned i i i, I think that uh, for six the last six decades kashmiris have generally cheered for pakistan and everybody knows that and people here took out processions also on that day so but obviously i mean as pradeep uh, was also saying and others were also saying that i mean as far as sport is concerned but obviously when it comes to kashmir it gets overtoned politically but in this case i think the university authorities miserably failed in handling the situation even if shujad, the student yeah shujad sorry uh, shujad you are saying that you know it is a, a that that pak that kashmir is normally cheer for pakistan and there are there the processions in the streets when these things happen do you think these are all when when the students come to other parts of the country and if they do similar thing that could be provocative yeah it could be provocative i do agree on that i think um, i mean i i was in the, i was in some other channel also earlier i said that yes students ma, uh, ma, i mean may uh, they could have observed restraint because the way the kashmiri students have uh, faced harassment and intimidation at various schools and uh, colleges and universities in rest of india on different pretexts so in this case also they could have observed a restraint but they did not but obviously they are young they are uh, they are very young and they are angry also so but i think here the uh, role of the university administration uh, comes in where even the vice chancellor could have brought them on the table counseled them and told them this is not to be done like this you have done something wrong and next time don't do this but slapping sedition charges on them is not only ridiculous but it is shameful and i think now they have carved out a way they have paved way for hafiz said to chip in and Absolutely. offer a uh, scholarship to these people and the, pe- the the man whom india says is most wanted in the country has been given a chance to talk about like this not so only, i think I'm, not only I'm, hafiz said even the government foreign office the pakistan foreign office spokesperson go- seems to government, have government is still him. fine i mean yes. i don't have problem with the government because kashmiris still go to pakistan under sark scholarships okay so but when hafiz said comes into picture i mean you can say that how government of india i mean gives opportunities and gives spaces to the people whom they don't want to give generally okay justice khan i think he has a very two three important points one is that there is this feeling in in kashmir still still you know that uh, 
pro pakistani feeling at least in a cricket match if they are cheering for pakistan we he says it's quite a it's quite a normal thing in in kashmir so when they bring that same spirit in out of kashmir to this kind of play to other places they they could land in trouble one second thing is about the attitude of the university authorities and, and, and of course the third one is about the how the how, how the the you no know, some somebody like hafiz said getting into the act and fishing in troubled waters no i don't know that that spiritual aspect of it uh, what he has talked about i would not be able to comment on that i am a legal person i have nothing to do with politics but uh, as far as university authorities conduct is concerned that has been reprehensible it has been despotic how can you do you think do you think that the university authorities were 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 sort of forced into taking that kind no, of no surely not they acted tough. because there was there was there were complaints now the there are there are people who are who are taking serious objections to the withdrawal of sedition charges against the students those the same elements were forcing maybe have forced the university authorities to take this action girish uh, we have something called rule of law in this country you can't pack up 60 people overnight and throw them on the road or throw them in the river somewhere You don't know out of those sixty-three people who did what. They, they, they themselves, they themselves say that you know a few, no. few of them are in it no, no. because no, no, they were no, no, not. No, 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 no. That's why, that's why law provides. Right. That's why law provides an opportunity to be given. You have to give an opportunity and find out who did what. Suppose somebody raised a slogan, should we cut his throat? Or suppose four people are involved, should we punish sixty-three people? And that vice chancellor has the cheek to say that. Um, to put uh, them um, um, off the uh, wrath of people yes i beg them take yes. them off yes. it is a responsibility trying to, to trying to save them actually protect them no what i am saying is on illegality the action has been despotic it has been grossly illegal university authorities should have acted according to law this amounts to eradication of these 63 yeah, was, people from the students what, unmindful of what is happening to their career educational career absolutely uh, so, maxim uh, perera you know th- these were students actually who had incidentally come on pm scholarship you know there is a special scholarship being given to kashmiri students who want to go and study outside kashmir these are all students who have come on that on that particular scholarship you think the university authorities should have handled the situation better or do you think that you know there is an element of political uh, you know force political pressure on them because of which they they seem to have taken this action uh girish i think uh, uh, many many have missed the court or uh, the tweet that uh, omar abdullah right. uh, the chief minister you know uh, tweeted yesterday uh, immediately after the incident while showing the indignant uh, you know um, uh, being indignant over it he very categorically you know tweeted that um, that the university has done what it should have uh, you know what it needed to do but uh, they of course condemn the police action of putting the sedition section uh now i mean going by that i would like to really i it's one thing condemning the university authorities it's another thing also to view it prudently whether whether if the, the priority then was to was to neutralize the incident immediately by removing those who were sort of uh, in the eye of the storm from the scene of the storm you know uh, uh, one has to one shouldn't be very judgmental uh, too quick to be judgmental on this i think when facts come out uh, there i mean uh, i hope somebody is inquiring into the incident and the repercussions the fallout of it uh this these are things i think we should be not very judgmental in so you think so there are things like i think media can yeah so you think if, that if you think will, that uh, let me finish yeah sorry yeah please finish yeah you know the media could have media could have really played rather than blowing it up they could have been the soothing aspect so what if that has happened so what you know Uh, if uh, if somebody has cheered i mean uh, the that manner is... in which it was done even the university 
perhaps has bungled in doing it in the manner in which it was done because they were hardly given any notice they were just told to vacate and leave yeah, you know and in, uh, without in fact, um, uh, in fact they were packed in, for yeah in fact they were packed in buses and sent away uh, uh, yeah they, just so, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just Maxwell. bundling, bundling them off yes. like that, I don't think was the right thing. Okay. Anyway, you still think that the, yeah. there, there is an element of a benefit of doubt which could be given to the police for having bundled them out because of the ex existing situation. We will see. No. See the repercussion we, today. We see the repercussion. You know, like yes. no Kashmiri will want to go back to the. But that is exactly to the university. That is exactly this the point. National integration that we have been working on. The biggest blow to that is that tomorrow what happens, Kashmiris may be hesitant in going to any university elsewhere in the country. Right. You know, the first cry of these boys was to, you know, let us, give us a seat in Jammu and we will, you know, go back there. We don't right. want to come back to Meerut. Now, this is a feeling that we have been trying to overcome for the last 65 years. We have been yes. trying to give the Kashmiris every opportunity to go elsewhere in the country and okay. study. Okay, uh, Maxwell, work, let me get... Do everything possible, you know. Okay. The, this is... The, mm. well, let's, let me get Shujat in on this. Shujat, you think the alienation, you know, th th this kind of incidents can alienate, alienate them further? Do you think that there is still, there is still uh, th this feeling among the Kashmiri students that they are not accepted in other parts of the country as much as they should be? And do you think that this particular incident will have any serious repercussions on on what students choose where to go? Uh, obviously, I think I think the students are not only secured, but uh, obviously there is a danger that uh, uh, in which direction their energy would now be uh, utilized or channelized, and who will exploit that? I think that's a that's that's another danger. So they are pushed to the wall, and obviously, especially the students who have been thrown out of this university will not be in a position to go back. They are, they are, they are scary and uh, even other students who would uh, try to go out like this, I mean, would not be in a position to take a decision. So I think it's a severe jolt and it's a big jolt to that process. And I, I don't know, I mean, why UP government had to do and take such a decision at this point of time. But okay. obviously it further eliminates the people and it doesn't help Okay. To, uh, I mean, get them closer to anywhere. Pradeep, you know, it's very interesting. Somebody was say, well, somebody was asking in, in on a tweet or in a, on the Facebook, if if an Indian cheers for a Sri Lankan team or a Bangladeshi team or things like that, there, there is no such repercussions. We don't have any problems if 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 India, if anybody cheers for any other team except Pakistan. You know, there are see internationally. Let's there, I think she'll say different. <laughs> see, internationally, there are rivalries, not just between two nations. See, there are histories of rivalries right. which get transcend or translate into sports. Right. Uh, for instance, you have football clubs who have violence. You have yes, you exactly. have they they fight with each other, they kill each other. <laughs> so their their sports has got mixed up into politics. But here we are talking about authorities who have to be careful in yes. how to deal with th these things. Now what, as Sujat is saying, what this incident has done is, it has worsened situations. It's obviously students who are coming from Kashmir here, they come with a lot of, you may call prejudice or you may call uh, uh, justified yes. anger, but once they come here and they get exposed, exp they they get exposed like this. Now what do they do? They go back. What are the pictures being shown to Kashmir that look what Absolutely. we are saying is that's the Indian state. It, it, that's it, it, against gets, us. it only gets reinforced. Last words to you, uh, Justice Khan. How do we get you know how how do you tackle these kind of situations? No, we'll have to I think um, change the mindset of the authorities. Uh, vis a vis Kashmiri students or Kashmiri treatment or whatever. Uh, because you see the if you have, if you start with some kind of a prejudice or a bias, uh, only in the name of Kashmir, then you can't be fair, obviously. Okay, sir. I think <clears throat> on that note we need to end. Maybe we, maybe there is also a uh, need to relook at the whole issue of sed this whole uh, section on sedition itself, which there has been a demand for a long time, a colonial uh, law which still continues on our um, statute. We will see, we will wait and watch, but we will hope that, you know, this incident will not get blown up, blown out of such proportion that Kashmiris feel completely alienated. We hope that this is just an aberration and we will hope that the Kashmiri students will continue to come to other parts of India and study. We'll
you wait and watch. Thanks to all my guests, Justice B.A. Khan, Pradeep Magazine, Maxwell Pereira and Shujat Bukhari. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.